I was 13 years old when this happened, so yeah, it was a long time ago, but it's the one experience in my life that I will never forget, no matter how old I live to be. We were living in a farmhouse on a 400-acre property just outside of the small town where I went to school. My dad rented the house because he was a long-distance truck driver and needed parking for his big rig. I didn't mind the house, but honestly, I would have liked living in town better because I always had to leave school right after it let out and couldn't hang out with my friends because I relied on a school bus to get me home. One morning, I went to the end of my long driveway to get the bus to school. I got there about 10 minutes earlier than the scheduled pickup. I was shocked when the bus pulled up almost immediately. The door opened and I got on before looking at the driver. When I did look at the driver, I was kind of shocked to see a man that I didn't know behind the wheel. I don't remember her name, but we had had the same female bus driver for many years, and she had never missed a day. Good morning, Doc, the old man behind the steering wheel said. Kindly take a seat. I was about to ask him why he called me Doc, but when I made my way up the stairs to the seat, I noticed that the school bus was empty, which was really odd seeing as how my stop was the last stop in the morning, and there should have been at least 20 other kids on the bus. I took the first seat and looked over to the bus driver. He didn't say anything, he just stared straight ahead. I asked him where the other kids were, but he didn't reply. I felt really uneasy. I wondered if I had just been picked up by some filthy perv and what he was going to do to me. My fears worsened when we drove the mile up the street to the next major intersection. He was supposed to turn left, but instead he turned right. Um, I think you're going the wrong way. The town is to the left. Gotta take a detour, the bus driver said. Radio station said there's an accident on our normal route, so sit tight, Doc. I'll get you to the school, but you might be a little late, but I'll get you there. I don't know if the bus driver thought I was stupid or something, but I was well aware of the fact that there was no radio on the bus. As if there was, I would have heard it too. I sighed. Yep, I've been kidnapped. I had no idea what to do, so I just sat there and watched as he drove me up and down a bunch of random dirt roads. I figured I would just sit there until he brought the bus to a stop at wherever he planned to take me, and when he came after me, I would make a run for the back emergency exit. I didn't know what else I could do. I mean, he wasn't a big guy, but I was 13, so I figured he could probably kill me if he wanted to. So I just sat there and said nothing. I even pretended to fall asleep for a bit. After an hour or so, he called to me. Hey, Doc, he said, calling me by that weird nickname. This is your stop. I was shocked when I opened my eyes to see that we were at the school. I looked out the front window of the bus to see my regular bus was parked in front of us. Something was wrong. I felt the hairs on the back of my neck stand up as I looked at the back of my re regular bus. The windows were all shattered. The bus driver opened the door with a somber look on his face but didn't say anything to me. I got off the bus and saw a uniformed police officer and a paramedic go onto my regular bus. I walked towards the bus noticing that there were cop cars and fire trucks and ambulances all over the place. There was crime scene tape surrounding the front door of the school. The front door of the school came open, and I saw some firefighter pushing a stretcher out of the school. As he moved towards me, I could see the, behind him into the main hallway. There was blood everywhere, and dead bodies all over the place. I wanted to puke. Oh my god, I said as I looked up the front door to my regular bus and saw the driver. Mrs. Brown, that was her name. She was slouched over onto the steering wheel and a big chunk of her head was missing. I walked up the stairs of the bus and saw the most terrifying thing I had ever seen in my life. Fifteen or so of my classmates were all covered in blood. They were all gone. They were all dead. What the hell is happening? I said those words over and over again until eventually I was yelling them at the top of my lungs, but neither the paramedic nor the cop seemed to be able to hear me. I just stood there, not sure what to do. I wanted to help, but it was too late. There was nothing I could do. There was nothing anybody could do. They were all gone. I got off the bus and walked to the school and went inside. I shouldn't have done that, I know, and I was half expecting somebody to stop me, but none of the firefighters, cops, or paramedics seemed to be able to see me. I didn't understand what was going on. I walked the hallway to my homeroom class and saw more of the same. Classmates, some of them close friends, and the teacher were all dead. 
Among them, my best friend, somebody I'd known my whole life, was lying on his back at the back of the classroom, his eyes wide open and lifeless. No, I said to myself, who could do such a horrible thing? I needed answers, but there was nobody that could hear my questions, nobody that could see me. I wanted to scream in frustration, but then I remembered something. There was somebody that could see me, the phantom bus driver. I ran down the hallway, past all the bodies, and out the front door, and back towards the spot where he had parked the school bus, but when I got there, the bus was gone. He had left me. I was there alone. I stood there for a moment, not really sure what to do, but eventually I decided to start walking. Obviously there would be no classes today, but it was at least 10 miles to get back to my house. In a fog and unsure of what to do or think, I started walking. I must have walked six or seven blocks when I heard the sound of a horn honking. I looked to see the school bus driven by the phantom bus driver had caught up to me. The driver opened the door and said, get in, so I did. I took a seat and he drove me back to my house without saying a word. Here you are, Doc. Your stop, he said as he opened the school bus door at the end of my driveway. I stood up and walked down two steps before turning around and looking at the driver. He had a very serious look on his face. I'm sure I did too. We locked eyes for a moment before I finally spoke. Why? Why save me and not those other people? I was just following orders, Doc. I was assigned to you. But those people were all innocent. None of them deserved to die like this. I know, the driver said, but it's not my call. One thing you'll learn as you get older is that you can't save them all, Doc. You can't save them all. With that, I got off the bus and that was the last time that I saw the old bus driver. At least, it was the last time until today today being the 30th anniversary of that tragic day. I'm 43 years old, almost 44, and I'm one of the top heart surgeons in the country. I was in the hospital late, and I decided to check on one of my patients. I walked into his room, and out of the corner of my eye, I saw somebody sitting in a chair. I turned to tell them that visiting hours were long since over, and found myself staring into the eyes of the old bus driver. It's been a long time, he said. Yes, I answered, a lifetime. I just wanted to pop in and say good job. The bus driver stood up and looked down at my unconscious patient. You went the extra mile for this one. You've saved a lot of lives that other doctors might not have been able to save. You're a good man. Well, to be honest, I don't think I've saved any lives. Maybe I've prolonged a few, but that's about it. I guess the same could be said for me the bus driver said. Anyway, I'll get out of your hair. I just wanted to stop in and see how you're doing. I'm doing the best I can, I answered. But that day, it still haunts me. Well, I'm sure it does, he said. And I'm guessing the stress of this job doesn't help you either. But remember, you're a good man. What you do matters. I know, I said. Just remember one thing, the old man said as he walked towards the door. What's that, I asked. You can't save them all, Doc. You can't save them all.